Can you all stand, please, everybody? to know my hand and the measure of my days what it is let me know how frail I am behold the words made my days as hundreds and my age as nothing before thee surely every man and his best estate is altogether vanity Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Blessed be the Lord, who daily beareth our burden. Even the God who is our salvation. God is unto us a God of deliverances. And unto Jehovah, the Lord belong the issues from death. Let me die the death of the righteous. And let my last end be like his. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also that are fallen asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the heart do change, and though the mountains be moved into the heart of the seas, though the waters thereof do roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake thereof, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. And let me say praise the Lord to everybody this morning. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Today we are here to celebrate the life of Mary Kellyer. Although she was not a full-fledged member of this assembly, but her husband and it's very strange, you know. Gussie, we grew up together. And I did not know his real name. I said until his, he was baptized here nearly a year ago. Very strange. But we're here to celebrate her life. Death is sure. We do not know when, where, and how. But for sure, one of these days we're going to die. And so our sister is gone on before to be with the Lord. And so we welcome you to King's Chapel this morning, family members. And friends who are here, God bless you. We're so happy to have you. I know it's a sad time for us as family, but 
we do rejoice that Sister Mary gave her life completely to the Lord. We're going to ask you to look at your programs at this time. That just look at them, but to sing with us the opening hymn. In the book of God, so precious, we are told of Pentecost. How the blessed Lord's disciples started for the Holy Ghost. Pentecostal fire fell on them, burning up their sin and just, filling them with powerful service, making them a mighty host. Join us in singing this beautiful hymn. God bless you. here to celebrate the life of our departed sister. Lord, we ask for your direct to his toes, Jesus. Lord, you have done it before on so many occasions. And so, Lord, we know that you can do it one more time. And so we ask that you'll touch his body and restore him to perfect end right now in your name Lord bless this service those who will be giving their tributes the songs I pray that someone today will come to know you as their Lord and Savior as you clearly said in your words, what shall it profit a man if he gains his whole world and loses one soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? And so today we ask 
your blessings right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before you take your seats, we're going to invite Nicole Brown, grandson, to come and read the first lesson, Revelation chapter 21 from verse 1 to 7. If you could please stand for the reading. Hearing me? Oh, morning. morning. I'm just <laughs> Good. All right. All right, so today's reading is coming from Revelation 21, verse 1 to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice of the heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, nor shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for, those, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end. And I will give unto him things, sorry, I will give unto him that is a thirst, a fountain of the water of life freely. Verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. You can be seated. Praise God. The King's Chapel family do offer their condolences um, to the bereaved family members, and we just want to assure you that our prayers will always um, be with you. God bless you. We do welcome you all here this morning. Um, we do have some officiating ministers and moderators at this time. We want to welcome um, Pastor Trevor Odlin. God bless you, sir. Be your speaker for today. Pastor Carlington Singh, Evangelist Singh, and Pastor Munder. I'm sorry, Minister Munder. Yeah. And uh, at this time, I'm going to be handing over to Pastor Singh, who will be leading in the moderating of this service today. God bless you. Can we praise the Lord, everyone? Come on, wave your hands and give God glory. And somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Praise God. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God shall gather round, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Can we put our hands together by?
of God shall gather round. How we overcome, we will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all of God shall gather round, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. One more time, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints are we will tell. Story, how we overcome, we will understand it better by and by. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. To the host pastor. King's Chapel United Pentecostal Church, Pastor Frank Kelly, to Pastor Trevor Udlin, and to all the ministers of Christ Tabernacle Christian Center. Also want to acknowledge the wife of Pastor Frank Kelly, Sister Kelly, and to the bereaved family. Praise God to all friends and well wishers. Praise God, we welcome you. The welcome is already done. And so we just want to give God thanks today. Amen. At this time, we have a poem, and it will be done by Jody K. Kelly, a granddaughter. And then a song by Sharon Reed, Step Granddaughter. And we would like you to come in that order. So a poem by Jody K. Kelly. Mama, you let me be for me, but the time you can see you, you're always at my side. I love you, Mama. One more time. You let me be for me, but you're always still my guy. But your time you can see you, you're always at my side. I love you, Mama. Come on, can we put our hands together again? Amen. We have a song. Step, granddaughter. All right, so we move on. And at this time, we'll have the second lesson, which is coming from 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 to 17. It will be done by Zori Shea Palmer, granddaughter. We ask, it's our tradition that when we read the scriptures, that you start. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. The scripture reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 14 to 18. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord 
shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 18 and last, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Here ends the portion of God's holy word. We we'll honor it by saying, Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, today we have Evangelist Singh, the Minister Mongo, who will also be participating in our moderating. And so from time to time, you will notice different faces. Amen. Amen. We are going to go ahead and we'll be doing the remembrance, the first remembrance of this time. And it will be done by Carlita and KB Kevin, granddaughters. That leaves our take to ready. That leaves our take. No one can heal. Memories are treasures. That no one can steal. Some, Some may forget. forget. You know that you are gone, but we will remember no matter how long. You will always stay loved and remembered in every way. No tears, no verse can ever say how much we will miss you every day. One of my grandmother's greatest, greatest attributes is that she had a very giving heart. One of my most recent memories is one of my usual visits to weekly visits to Kensington. When it was time for me to go home and I was about to shower, I heard her calling me from upstairs saying she had a soap for me. I instantly thought this was a bar soap or a shower gel for me to use shower. I checked and I didn't see the soap, so I said to her, Mom, I don't see the soap that you're talking about. She said, yes, ma'am, there is a soap there. So I said, no, I only see a pack soap, which is the laundry soap. So I said, what should I use this soap for? She said, no, must you use wash your clothes them when you go home. <laughs> so I started to laugh. So I said, oh, Mom, you have soap to wash my clothes to go home? And she said, yes. I got two and I'm giving you one of them. So I started to think long and hard about it and I didn't feel well taking one of her two soaps. But I know I had to give her a very valid reason for not taking the soap. So I then turned to her and I said, you know I have a very big bag of soap and I'm gonna bring plenty for you next week. Along with your weekly party that she'd normally request and her juice. She said, okay, that sounds good. Her giving heart and her caring ways are just two great qualities of my grandmother that I would like to emulate to keep her memory alive. The woman I am today, I pay great respect to my grandmother. Um, I'm what you would call a homegrown granny because my grandmother is who raised me. So I pay great respect to her because I would not be who I am today without her. My grandmother was the one who was responsible for socializing me and socializing in terms of morals, values, respect, attitude. She was the one. She made sure I knew how to do basic stuff 
And if I must say, the neatest uniforms I've ever worn, even going to more than primary school, you know, it's pleated uniform at the time, was sewn by her. She was the best dressmaker. And that's one of the skills that I realized that she passed on to me. And the more I realized that there's so much of her that is in me, and know that she's no longer here with us, that is one of the things I hope I'll be able to carry on to make her memory stay alive. And one of the things I must say, she was very big on thank you. She, was, she believed in that. No matter how small something may seem, she always believed you should return and say thank you. And also in this moment, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been supporting my family. This is probably the hardest thing we've ever been through. We say thank you. And for me personally, not being home it's probably twice as hard and i must say my family that god blessed me with i'm really grateful for them my aunt and my uncle there who are also my spiritual leaders bishop derrick and pastor hannah i am thankful thank you for supporting me through this time and after the passing of my grandmother for days, I tried to think of one thing that stood out for me during my time living with her. And one day I got to the point where I said, what is the greatest thing she's ever done for me? Which was hard because there are so many memories coming at me at once. But I said, what is the greatest thing she's ever done for me? Then it came to me, the greatest thing my grandmother ever did for me, she ensured I, I knew God. I had to be in church. It wasn't a choice. I had to be in church. When I could probably play games with other things, I had to be in church. I had to be in Sunday school. I had to be in camp. And parents, I'll tell you, train up your child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they'll, when they're old they'll definitely come back. And that is the greatest thing my grandmother has ever done for me. Because a life without God, it's, it's meaningless. And today I just want to say, all my family members, I know everybody is hurting, but in the midst of this, don't forget God, because he's indeed been grateful to us. And I just want to leave you all with this song. as a way of, this is one of the songs that has helped me through the last few weeks, and it's a song that you all can take as well.
praise the Lord, everyone. Can we just stand and praise his name? The song said, Greater is he that is in me. He will take the pain away if you just praise his name. Can somebody give God a praise at this time? Hallelujah! Greater is he that is in me. He will take the pain away if we just praise his name. Can we praise the Lord in the house, everybody? Can we shout a praise in the house today? her Mary. Many called her Miss Bev. My mother and aunts and uncles called her mommy. Our parents called her Beverly. But I got the greatest honor of all. I got to call her mama. Mama was special. She was a freshly cut rose. She had the sweetest fragrance and her beauty both inside and out, brought joy to everyone who got a dose. Mama was a fashionista, a real hot girl, if I'm permitted to say so. Her handbag, shoes, and her dress had to complement each other, or else she would not wear them together. Her scent was divine. She had numerous bottles of body splash and lotion. Maybe she could have started a little business. Miss Bev's fragrances and more. And the more could definitely be her delicious food that she could cook every day. Her food was so tasty. It did not only keep hunger away, it excited our taste buds and made us want to eat from her pot every day. Mama was an exceptional woman, a true woman of God. She took her work for the Lord seriously and so she could be seen at church and at church activities. But Mama did not only answer the call to love thy God with all thine heart, she also answered the call to love thy neighbor as thyself. And over the years, many from our community benefited from her kindness. Mama loved her family. She truly loved grandfather and she looked after him well. Like grandfather, her children received the best care and even as adults, 
benefited greatly from her motherly love. As her granddaughter, I along with my cousins enjoyed visiting grandma because besides the delicious food and the love that permeated the air, we would also look forward to the look at chains where she would have put in our hand. Mrs. Mary Kelly, Miss Bev, mother of many, my grandmother, was a great woman. She provided the blueprint for the kind and virtuous woman that I would like to become. Mama, you provided a stellar example of how to love and love truly. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. We will miss you. And I will always and I will always love you. Rest in peace, ma. Thank you.
tears are gone. Praise the Lord, everybody. God has been good to me. I really can't complain. Praise God. Proverbs 31, verse 10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. A virtuous woman is one who leaves her home with integrity, and my mom displayed such discipline and more. All the virtues she practiced were aimed at making her husband's life better, teaching her children, and serving God. Indeed, she bore the maiden name, Virtue, and as such, was a good woman. Mom can be remembered for her mouth-watering dishes. She was the best cook of curry goat and goat belly soup. Food was always in her house. 
Her grandchildren can tell you how mom would cook a pot of boiled bananas, dumplings, saltfish, and callaloo for breakfast. But when observed, they thought the fish was too little to share with the starch. But, the end, but at the end of breakfast, everyone ate and had been given sufficient fish to make their meal tasty. A matter of fact, she loved boiled bananas and saltfish. She would often remind me to get the nice saltfish for her and tell me, get anything else you think I want. Mom was one of the weirdest eaters. She never ate sardines, tin mackerel, corned beef, ackee, and liver. However, she would make you a meal with the above that would whet your appetite and have you wanting more. She also had special ways for preparing her meals. And as such, no one was perfect at cooking for her. Mom's kitchen was open to all her children, grandchildren, friends, visitors, and the community at large. Even though we are all adults, there was food in our kitchen for us to eat even when we turned up unannounced. If my mom knew I was going to be leaving work late, she would call for me to pick up my dinner when I am passing. A matter of fact, she would sometimes tell me that the dinner is for my husband, to my left, Andy, and proceeded to reprimand me that I am going home too late. You are what? Make you want the power road so late. My mom was very concerned about her children and grandchildren. A matter of fact, she worried about every little thing that might go wrong with them. Or she thinks things might be wrong. As such, we chose what we told her. During the COVID lockdown, my daughter is now studying for a medical degree, was told, was told to tell the people them not to send her out to Spanish Town Hospital because out they full of COVID. She was not joking and my father joined in with her. She would also call her regularly to check up and she watched the news to see what is going on in Kingston. The most recent worrisome expression came when we had the flooding in Montego Bay in April. We were on the road, I took her to the doctor and it was raining so heavily. We were sitting in the car waiting to go into the pharmacy. Her response was, I wonder if Candy have flooding in a Kingston because this area no normal. My mom loved dressing up and going for a ride with me or even on church trips. For church occasions, she first she would be ready first, and if I turn up late, she would reprimand me. I'm going to miss our Sundays together. From traveling two miles to get her for church to eating out a little of what she prepared for dinner for the day. Her precious journey has come to an end. I am happy she spent the last week with me. <laughs> I am also thankful for my husband's support when she fell ill and I was out doing grocery shopping and he, she had, and he had to rush her to the hospital. The many visits to the pharmacy, the hospital and the doctors have ended. 
even though these errors became permanent times, I faithfully committed to the end. My mom will be surely missed. Sleep in peace. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord here? Yeah. Shall we praise the Lord? Yeah. Yes. It is really a sad occasion today that I'm here, amen, to celebrate with you the life of Sister Beth. Amen. But we are here to put her away. We are not going to put her away. Just dead. We want little life in this. Am I right? Let me lift our hand and wave it. Let me wave it. Amen. And if you have to sing with me, you're going to sing with me. But we're going to praise God. Amen. I remember Sister Beth. And the minute that she see me pass through to Montego Bay, she will prepare my cow skin and my beef until I come. I enjoy her hand in those days. She let me feel good. So I'm going to sing this song. I'm sorry I ain't got my wife beside me to sing with me, but I'm going to do what I can do. Amen. Amen. Oh, pray, just Lord, take my hand. I am tired. I am weak. I am well. Through the storm. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. Yes. 
of sail on so blindly blindly I would roam but I trust in thy grace till I finish all of my worries Will you take my hand, precious Lord, lead me on, oh precious Lord, take my hand. Good morning everyone, I'm Daisy, Miss Bev's youngest sister from her mom, Miss Merle. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who's here today. As a family, we are genuinely feeling the love. I lived in Jamaica for probably about just under 10 years and a lot of that time was spent in the country, either at my grandmother's home my grandparents' home, Mars West and Amame, or at Miss Bev and Gassy, or with my Aunt Del. I tend to have a big smile on my face. Sorry. I tend to have a big smile on my face um, whenever I 
think of Miss Bev um, and staying with her, as it always involved food, and anyone who knows me knows that I love my food. And on top of that, Miss Bev could cook. Meal portions were always generous, which obviously I liked. Cecile and Sandy and I used to sleep together, and I'd force them to call me Auntie Daisy, even though I wasn't much older than they were, but I knew I was their aunt. And Miss Bev would say, Ya Guan likes her, are you? I'm a mother. Um, as every minute I was in the country. Thinking back, it's because I felt the love that she gave me, and as a child, that's why I always wanted to go back. And that was her nature, loving, forgiving, and generous. Those times are in my treasure box of happy times of living in Jamaica, and she played a large role there. She even showed me how to wash, under, wash using rainwater under the house bottom in Tanga River, and I'll never forget that. She, this may seem like little things to most of you, but not to me, it meant the world. Each time I came to, Jam to Jamaica, one of the first things I'd do was vi visit the country and see my family, especially Miss Bevan Earl. My mom, Miss Merle, who passed in 2019, was so proud of Miss Bev and her children, and she would always introduce them with pride, sometimes more than once in the conversation, smiling knowingly that she was hers. Marcia, my other sister, who sadly passed in 2020, also loved Miss Bev dearly. She was at her happiest when one year Miss Bev and Miss Merle were both at her home in Florida. It gave her the greatest joy. So yes, it was always about family for us. So from me and my brothers, Earl and Brian, thank you. And once again, thank you all for joining us in wishing our sister a fond farewell on her journey. Goodbye, Miss Bev, until we meet again in glory. Amen.
just over in the glory land. That is where we'll join Sister Bev again. Amen. And for those of us who miss her, for those of you who miss her, if you have not yet done what you need to do to meet her over in the glory land, today is your day. Amen. Amen. Today is your day. We never know when it will be time for us to leave this earth. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after death comes the judgment. So if we want to see Sister Bev again, let us all prepare for that great and wonderful day. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. At this time, Alita Hines Johnson, who is a sister, is going to be doing the eulogy. After Mrs. Johnson, Minister Mundell will continue with the rest of the program. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Do you want to? Okay. Is it this one or that one? It's this one. Okay. Can you? Can you hear me? Oh, okay. All right, okay. Okay, do you mind holding this for me? Good morning, everyone. So, First Peter 4, verse 8, tells us that, above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Beth was a symbol of love, regardless of the situation that came her way. She showed love to everyone. During the trying times of COVID, and we've all been through it, of the COVID lockdown around the world, we, just like many other families, took comfort from calling relatives, and Bev and I called each other more often than before, mostly on a weekly basis, but at the end of each conversation, we would always tell each other, I love you. That is what has kept me going since she passed. Therefore, I have no regrets, because I said all I needed to say. All that any of us need to say or no, is that we love each other and are loved. In 1948, Lily Kynes, Miss Mal, saw the need to earn a skill. So at the age of 17, she journeyed from the small rural community of Tangle River in St. James to Cobbler in Manchester. During her stay in Cobbler, she met and bonded with Roy Virtue and became pregnant with Bev. Our mother had no family in Cobbler, so she returned to her home in Tangle River for emotional support. Even though she was aware that her, that her family would not be happy with the early pregnancy, however, Bev was born the following year in December 1948, 49, sorry, and her birth brought a lot of joy to the family, and she was loved unconditionally. However, there was one story from a family member who said that our mum's sister, who is no longer with us, Aunt Punt, told them of the drama of how she had to run from her house in the local, uh, to get the local midwife in the night when Merle, our mum, was in labour. Very soon after Bev was born, our mum, now known as Miss Merle, went to seek employment in Montego Bay and eventually migrated to England where she married my father. Bev stayed in Jamaica with her aunt Punce and her grandparents, May and Wellesley Hines, and was well taken care of. 
Later on, she attended the Vaughan Field Elementary School and left at age 15. After leaving school, Bev would visit Walderston in Manchester on a regular basis to be with her dad and other siblings and then return to St. James where she could bond with her siblings on our mum's side. She was the eldest child of both parents. Just like our mother, Bev had the desire to make to become a, a, a dressmaker and she did achieve that skill from an early age. She didn't use that skill for economic gain but used it to be more independent and sewed all her children's uniforms as well as drapes for her house. Bev got her first job in Montego Bay. During the first week of that job she met Isaac Kellia. How did that happen? Well, she went uh, to do her weekly fruit and vegetable shopping at the Charles Garden Market in Montego Bay. And on that same day, Isaac Kellia went to buy some chicken feed for his farm chicken in the same market. And that is when he met Bev. Although Isaac had seen Bev around numerous times in Tangle River, the two had not met formally, but on this day, he was so charmed by her dazzling beauty and her poise when she held her fruit and vegetable basket that she just melted his heart and he couldn't help but approach her and tell her how beautiful and pleasing it was to, to meet her. The two I think you me like you. <laughs> the two of them talked for hours and agreed to meet again later on in the week. But then Isaac, also known as Gussie, agreed that Bev was to come with him. She went to Glen Devon to get her white grip and the two of them went back to Tungle River where they spent the night at Bev's next door neighbour, that is Bev's cousin's house. Bev had to stay at her cousin's house because, a disagree because of a disagreement with her grandparents about the union with Isaac, which meant that she wasn't welcomed at their home. So the next day, Bev's grandparents had a deep conversation with both Bev and Isaac, wanting to find out who was this man that she came home with. They soon realized that Isaac was the son of a well-known businessman, Tata Kellia. Tata Kellia. Okay. I have to say it right. Tata Kellia. As soon as they found out that this information as soon as they found out this information, he was accepted. Come from a good family, you see, so them like him. And then he spent the rest of that week at Bev's grandparents' house. The weeks then turned into months, and Isaac proved himself to be the perfect match for me. Their personalities were different. It worked. They loved each other. As a couple, they went on to build their own home next door to Bev's grandparents' house in Tango River, and also got married around the same time. They had seven children, Carol, 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 Cecile, Donette, Sandy, followed by Carl, Sass, Mark, also known as uh, Connie, Jermaine, Jughead, then Simon, 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 
And lastly, Kamisha, who was a survivor of twins. The couple moved to Kensington in the early 1980s after the birth of their seventh child. In Kensington, they opened several businesses, such as the local meat shop, farming, and the trucking services. Bev was a perfect housewife who meticulously took care of her family. She was a committed mother who spent her entire life trying to please her children. She made sure that her children went to school and to church and never allowed the girls to go to parties. Mary Kellier, affectionately, affectionately known as Miss Beth, not only became a mother to many and a really good friend to others, which her church sisters can also attest to that, She was baptized in the early 1980s and always looked forward to meeting up with her church family. That was her best way of socializing away from the meat shop. Bev was also very close to her family and kept in close contact with the cousins she grew up with. Those cousins are Faithy, now deceased, she is our Aunt Del's daughter, and Monica, our Uncle Brownie's daughter. The three of them grew up together like sisters. Beth was a very quiet but loving person. She had a deep love for her children, which was extended to include her stepchildren. She loved all her grandchildren and played a major part in their upbringing. And I'm sure they can tell you many stories of when they were living with her or visited her. Jada, I hope I'm pronouncing some of these names right. Jada, Tiashi, Jordan, Tiasha, Jordan and Samoy grew up with her. And she was very sad when the last two left her home but was overjoyed when Dean's daughter, Jodie Kay, and his youngest daughter, Janelia, came to visit. Bev was also proud that Jodie Kay shared the same birthday with her. Miss Bev was also a good cook, as many people have already mentioned here. Her curry goat and rice and peas were really scrumptious. Her skillful cooking was always extended to the community, as you've heard, where she was regularly, where she regularly cooked a large pot of food to serve on Fridays after a busy day serving meat to customers. She always had a plate of food or a natural juice drink and a, and a loving smile for many of her nieces and nephews. Beth had sisters and brothers from both her mother and father's side. From her father, Roy Virtue, there were her sisters, Pat, Angie, Margaret, and Gloria. Her brothers are Roy, David, and Hugh. From her mother's side, Miss Mel, there are our sisters, Marcia, who lived in uh, Florida, but sadly passed away in uh, January, as my sister Daisy said. Her sister, Alethea, me, who lives in England, and her da uh, sister Daisy, who also lives in England. Her brothers are Earl Woodsman and brother Brian. Both her mum and dad have now passed away. So let's talk about recent events. Bev was hospitalized in January last year with health complications. And after being discharged from hospital, her condition improved and she was able to return to doing house chores. However, in April of this year, her health deteriorated again. 
After noticing the change, her daughter Sandy had her mother taken to her family home where she was well taken care of by her church sisters when Sandy was at work. But on May the 6th, things took a drastic turn and Miss Bev suffered a stroke and transitioned a few hours after that to her Lord. She will be missed by us all, but we know that we will see her again someday in glory. Rest in peace, Miss Bev. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to see him, to look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me live my of glory let me live my boy oh my life ever to enjoy oh I oh to look on oh there oh I'll be saving grace on the streets of glory let me live my Oh, I want to see him to look up. Oh, there. Oh, of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me live my voice. Oh, my life ever to rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have that hope in Jesus, amen. We have that hope in Jesus and uh, Sister Bev had that hope also. She died with that hope, hallelujah. And those who are here without that hope, I encourage you, hallelujah. Try Jesus, amen. Amen, try Jesus. It, it, there's no better time than now, hallelujah. I greet everyone today in the name of Jesus. We are going to continue with the tributes and just a reminder that we, you know, would want to continue to do things orderly and in a timely manner so that we can leave here in a reasonable time. Hallelujah. Coming to us with a, uh, um, a tribute is Christ Tabernacle Christian Center. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Can we just wave our hands and worship Jesus? Praise the Lord. Tribute to Sister Kelly, commonly known as we call her a church, Sister Bev. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral service of a friend, a dear friend. He referred to the dates on her program. He started from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth and spoke the dates with tears in his eyes, but said, what matters most was the dash between those years. That dash 
represents our time spent on earth. Only those who love her, loved Miss Bev, Sister Bev, knows what that dash is worth. What matters most is how Sister Bev lives and loves and spend her dash. Praise God. Sister Bev spend her dash serving God, serving people, and most of all, honoring the Creator. I am grateful to be a part of this day celebrating the incredible life of our dear sister Bev. She brought so much joy to everyone who knew her. To the church, sister Bev was very, very special. And on behalf of Christ's tabernacle, I am saying, we are not only going to miss her, but we missed her. She was a quiet, humble, loving sister. I'm right now looking at Sister Bev, sitting in her seat. Oh, Lord, my God. That was Sister Bev, praising God, lifting her hands, and worshiping her creator. She was a very special member of her church. Miss Bev participated in all areas, whether it was manual or simple giving of what God has blessed her with. What are some of the things that made Sister Bev special at Christ's Tabernacle? One of them was she gave liberally to the work of God. Everybody who has a debt from the church, Sister Bev would provide the cow skin and all much of the meat, as long as it comes from the cow, for that soup. That's Miss Bev. If we were having any program at church and we were doing soup, we only had to say or to remind her that tomorrow or the other day was the day and it would be coming forward. She, she was always present at all our church affair, be it a work day, a concert, any function that it was. And she likes to be a part of the cook when she was able. She was always cooking. Talk about curry. And I'll never forget Sister Bev's curry that she did down by the downstairs we were looking about our church. She really knows how to cook. One, another thing that was very special about Sister Bev was how much she takes care of her grandchildren. She made sure that all her grandchildren came to church. As a matter of fact, the children were all grown in church. Many of them have given their lives to God. But all our grandchildren, you could see them coming to church with Miss Bev. Miss Bev, as far as I can remember, is never at church without a bag of sweets. I don't know where Sister Bev gets so much sweet. But the moment you get beside her, she'll be porking, poking something into your hand. And that would be a sweet. And she would often, often say to me, Sister White, nobody eating at church, but let's see how me give you know. But she was poking the sweetie into her hands. Such a sweet soul. Not many of these people came to earth. Or we can say people like these passed this earth but once. To God be the glory for lending Sister Bev to Christ's tabernacle. Her life on earth is past, and I want to say to her family, she has gotten tired, weary. So her savior and master called her own. 
It might seem a bit early to you, but it was due time and in the due season. Family members, Sister Bev is resting. She's waiting on you to come home. I want to say to you, don't disappoint her. Get ready, be prepared, so that you can be where Sister Bev is. May her soul rest in peace. Light perpetually shines on her. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Soon we'll come to the end of life's journey. And perhaps we'll never meet anymore. Till we gather in heaven's bright city. Far away on that beautiful shore. If we never meet again. This side of heaven, as we struggle through this world and its strife, there is another meeting place somewhere in heaven by the side of the river of life. Oh, where the child. In rose bloom forever, and the separation comes no more. Said if we never meet again, this side of heaven, oh, we shall meet you on the beautiful shore. Oh, so often we are parted with sorrow. Benedictions often quicken our pain. But we never shall sorrow in heaven. Oh, God be with you till we meet again. Said if we never meet again, this side of heaven, oh, as we struggle through this world, it's strife. There is another meeting place somewhere in heaven by the side of the river of life. Separation comes no more. If we never meet again, this side of heaven, oh, we shall meet you on the beautiful shore. Oh, they say we shall meet by the river. Happy in heaven, oh, in that wonderful sweet by and by. Oh, if we never meet again, this side of heaven, as we struggle through this world, it's right. There is another meeting place somewhere in heaven by the side of the river of life. Oh, where the child in rose blow forever, and the separation comes no more. Oh, if we never meet again, 
me sign up, baby. Oh, we shall meet you on the beautiful shore. Oh, if we never meet again, this side of heaven. Oh, as we struggle through this world, we try. There is another meeting place somewhere in heaven. Oh, by the side of the river of life. Oh, where the charm in roses bloom forever. And where separation comes no more. Said if we never meet again, this side of heaven. Oh, we shall meet you on the beautiful shore. Said if we never meet again, this side of heaven. Oh, as we struggle through this world and its track, there is another meeting place somewhere in heaven. Oh, by the side of the river of life. Oh, where the child was blown for ever. And where separation comes no more. Said if we never meet again, this side of heaven. Oh, we shall meet you on the beautiful shore. Hallelujah. 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 Right. Coming to us next in this order, we have HMTHS, Earl Morris Technical High School, followed by Sister C. Taylor, Claudia Taylor, and then Pastor Keith Matheson. We'll come in that order.
place where there is no misunderstanding. And from all enmity and strife were free. That's CN8781, a white van. Um, shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? Mixed feeling, but we still got to praise God. Let me say condolence again from the Cars family. I think they are now watching. Amen. To you, my relatives. Um, I don't know if anybody know the color of debt. What debt look like? Anybody can tell me what color? From the ball until now. Amen. But 2019 to the first week of 2020, May, we have been lost in, we lost about seven family members. Back to back funeral. Family keep coming and going. That was devastating for us but i'm glad this afternoon for the weather i i don't know how many 
people realize that when we came into this life, we are not responsible for ourselves. No, our parents. But when we go up, we are responsible for our move out of this life. And so, Sister Bev, I've reached the age of responsibility. I'm glad that um, the life that she have lived was well worth it. There is no family or no government that don't want disagreement. Every family is exceptional. I really appreciate the way she bring up all her children, as big as they are, every one of them when they were young. Church was a must. I don't want to repeat, but I want to say something specially. Sister Palmer. Not many people know. Stand for me, please. From, from, she, from she was a child until this moment. My God, her parents brought her to church and she never looked back. Oh my God, a product. Make her put a high feather in her mother cap. I, I, I'm glad that she did it. Sister Babe carries a laugh. But don't, no man don't talk about it. Let me tell her something. If Sister Babe give you a joke, listen when she laugh. Those of us who are acquainted with her. And I can't find nobody. I don't know if it's Kamisha or Sister Cherry or Sister Cherry want to laugh like her. But there's nobody else missing laugh like Sister. It's a different kind of a laugh. When she laughs, you have to laugh too. But I'm, I'm very grateful that the, um, the day before she died, my cousin Sandy says, Claudette, I don't have nobody to stay with um, Sister Babe today, tomorrow. Um, and they got to go to pick up something, man to be and come back, and I've got to go. I said, listen to me, I've got to go to man to go back too. But you know what? I'm going to cancel my own until the afternoon. And I call her back and tell her, I will come and take care of Sister Babe for those hours. And let me know, let me tell her. I have no idea that that was that was was striking down one, two, three. That was counting down, and we did not know. That morning she looked so well, and she talked. I said, "My God, that baby's doing well, man." We did not know that that was her final stage of departure was coming. I I, I glad that I could. Cook something for her and she tell me what part of the meat she wants and I did cook it. And she reminded me to tell her, remember, remember to put the corn into the pot. And I did forget, you know. And she put the corn into the pot. I said, no. But anyway, the corn were very soft, so it didn't take no time to cook. And I made sure I cooked before her son-in-law came back. And I left my phone into her room, charging. And went outside to take a vehicle. And I remember that I leave the phone inside the room. And that was the last thing I heard. Sister Claudette, you leave your phone into the room charging. That's all I can remember the last conversation with her. We love Sister Bev so much. My, my auntie called her, which is our schoolmate, called her the quiet cousin. But I'm glad that she had given God a chance in her life. And that's what makes a big difference. She give God a chance in her life and her seat at the church. Whenever we don't see, see that seat occupied by her, we know she's not there or she don't come. But I'm glad today for the choice that she has made. She has produced some lovely fruits. Children at the womb, grand and great grandchildren. And I know she has gone home to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, which is a better part of her life, is to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to pray for the family and keep on uplifting up in her spirit as we do so in Jesus' name. Very well, my cousin Bev. Very well. Amen. Amen. Pastor Madison. Moving right along, I'm going to ask Sion and Ernal Kelly, your nephews, to come with their tribute. Good afternoon, family and friends. It's a sad occasion and also a happy one because I know Auntie Bev live her life the way we all should do. And I'm here today to thank her, 
to be a mother in my life. And a good mother too. She didn't birth me, but she be my mother. And I appreciate that. And we, me and the rest of the kids, we grew in one house in the last part of the 80s. And we all live as one. Never have any problem with anybody. And she take care of me and my brother here. Wally, you know, we are both warmy son. We are Uncle Gassi Nevis too. And also our cousin by my mother's side, Blossom from Tango River. So we are both ways, mother and father, you know. So it's a blessing too. And I'm, I'm here to say, Auntie Bev, thank you for everything. Thank you for washing my clothes, cooking my dinner, make sure I go to school, you know and treat me as a mother, don't treat me as an outside kid. And I appreciate that and I always have that in my heart and my mind. And each time I come from New York and come down, she always cook and make sure I have my food to eat. And I can remember one year I came down and I come and say, what are you doing, Auntie Bev? She say, I'm good. But what happened to the Christmas card? You didn't send us any Christmas card. What happened? You know? And I say, sorry about that, Auntie Bev, you know? And I, I remember another incident around Christmas time. We was, you know, fixing up the house there out by Kensington and cleaning, washing down and painting. And call, Sass, keep running around the house and giving problem. And you know, and she talking to him, talking to him, and he ain't listening, he just keep going around and I'm painting. And I say, don't worry, auntie. And I just catch him and paint his face, you know. <laughs> you know. I can never forget that one, but it's all love, you know? And I'm happy the way oh, me and my brother and the rest of Auntie Bev kids do. We all live as one, you know? And today we are here to celebrate our life, you know? And there was one more incident that I just remember. I used to DJ to play music, and one night the son is going to St. Elizabeth and I want to go. And, uh, and I didn't say anything to, him until, to her until the appointed day. I'm leaving the night. You know, he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to play the music with um, Thunder and them. She said, you could go, you know, but you ain't coming in back this house tonight, <laughs> you know. And surely when I came back, the gate was closed. I got to sleep in our Uncle Gassi truck front that, that night, <laughs> you know. But, you know, I love her and I appreciate her. And I, I appreciate the way she lived her life from when I was a kid growing up. And Auntie Bev, may your soul rest in peace. And family, don't worry. She at peace right now. And thank all the friends who came to celebrate our life today. Thank you all. Blessings. Good morning, everyone. Or I should say good afternoon. Um, Auntie Bev has raised us well. We have to go to church. Everyone share that in common. But you know you have the disobedient one then. <laughs> yes, and I was one of them. <laughs> and Sass was one of them. <laughs> Dean get a break because I'm at the cook on Sunday. <laughs> Him and Mark. But you know, Auntie Bev really raised us right. And when we lost Auntie Bev, you know, it's a great impact to the family. And not just to our family. It's a great impact to the community as well. Mm -hmm. To show you the way the impact is great, I feel it all the way in New York. Mm -hmm. And I had to come here today. Mm -hmm. And we all know the saying that goes, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, in our family, and I can say the community as well, it seems as if we lost that village, and Auntie Bev is that village to us. But Auntie Bev is not gonna leave us just like that, knowing the person that she is. I know prior to her death, she already asked the Lord that when her work on earth is done, watch over us, okay? So Auntie Bev defines everything that means goodness, you know, compassion, good deeds, just good deeds. And based on that alone, I can tell the family, rest assured, that there's a great place in heaven for Hanty Beth. Rest in peace. Amen.
And then we continue with the tributes coming is Donna Graham Matt B. Costa. with her cousin Beth. She has recalled the days journeying from the then modern secondary school to her home in Flamstead Gardens. She was confident of her dinner at Beth's home in Tanga River. History repeated itself in the future. Bev now resides in Kensington and Valerie works in Montego Bay. On her way home, she would visit with Bev. However, she is now accompanied by her three children. And of course, huge plates of dinner is served. Valerie would purchase meat and was also given meat freely. Here, I quote Valerie, my cousin Bev basket was never empty due to her benevolent character and love for humankind. May her legacy continue to live on through her offspring, unquote. Bev was the first grandchild for our grandparents, Mas West and Ma May. They all lived in a lowly, peaceful home at Cooper River in Tanga River. She was natured and nurtured by her grandparents and her mother, Merle, her aunt, Merdell, called Aunt Del, our mother, who has left us long ago, Aunt Puns, Kathleen, and Uncle Brownie. Can you imagine the adoration bestowed upon her, the first grandchild. She was spoiled, but our grandfather ruled his home with an iron hand. These formative, formative years exposed her character for later years. Our two older sisters, 
Pauline and Faithy, Faithy now deceased, were also born in the home in Tank River. Here, they, Bev paved many avenues for them. She called our mom Aunt Dell, so Pauline emulated her. My siblings and I addressed her as Aunt Dell, except Opal, the baby, who lovingly said, Mommy. Because of our dear cousin Bev, the name Aunt Dell has been resonated from second generation to fourth generation. This includes children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews. Sammy, my brother, attaches sentiments for mention. However, he further states that Bev reminded him of our mom, sharing similar characteristics. They were both quiet and placid. I vividly recall the days when Bev, Pauline, Faithy, Sammy, yours truly, Dick, Len, Valerie, Annette, Heather, and Charm would pack the crocus bags with clear and fresh dry banana leaves called trash. This was our bed. The first few nights were bittersweet. We retired to bed very early and the room was pitch black. We would jump on the beds and the banana trash created loud noise in the still silence of the night along with the laughter that we made during that time. Bev did not participate in this merriment. She was so humble, but she became the recipient of the beating we would all receive from our grandfather for disturbing them and others. She never betrayed us. She never said she was not amongst the ones making the noise. These were good old days with the bottle lamp, kaya, and banana trash. Cousin Bev, you are gone, but you were our cousin by rich blood. But you were our friend by choice. We will miss you forever. The meat shop will carry an empty slot where you positioned yourself. In our hearts, you will be perpetually linked to our sister Faithy. You both looked alike. You were like sisters. Your girls resemble. And Beth, why? You followed her soon after she transitioned this life. I quote, the clock of life is wound but once and no one knows the power to tell just when the time ends will stop at late or early hour. May you find the rest you deserve. At this time, we must release you. Rest, our dear cousin with peace of mind. Your memories are etched in our minds. They will live on through the legacy you created and left. Rest in the arms of Jesus. Rest in the arms of the Lord. Goodbye, goodbye, cause of death. Amen, amen. Just a kind reminder to the, those persons who have tributes left, please remember to do it short and spicy. All right, just change your positions, let us stand, just in case you are weary or tired of missing this song. 
Oh, I want to see him, to look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Oh, my life ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see. Amen. As we continue with the three remaining uh, physical tributes, uh, you will come in this order. Kerry and Connie now, friend, and Wesley, Daly, that's cousin, and Julian Watson, family friend. That's Kerry and Connie now, Wesley, Daly, and Julian Watson. Come in that order. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we are here celebrating the life of Sister Beverly. Yes, we are mourning, but we are also giving God thanks. We still have hope that we will see her again for those who remain with the Lord. Hallelujah. Feel free to stand with me and sing this song. Oh, what singing.
challenged privilege to share with you this afternoon the life of our own big cousin Bev. You know, I'll tell you something real quickly about Bev's coming into the world. We're talking about going out now, but you know, 
the coming in, I believe, my mother left this with us as, as kids, and we'll always remember it. Grandma May went to the market. Aunt Merle and her sister, Punz, with our mother, was left alone at home. Now, out of the blues, Aunt Merle said to Punz, Punz, me let me have baby, me let me have baby. So mother said, listen, oh my God, what are you saying? But while she, well, I'll tell you what, she said, <laughs> mother's word was, me turn fool. Because, you know, I don't have no knowledge what to do. So the reflective turbocharge clicked in my driver. And she speed her way up to Aunt Lucille, sister Cara, sister Car. Aunt Lucille wasn't home. So she went a little further up to Aunt Mama Mumbella. Yeah, Mom. <laughs> Mama Mumbella said to, 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 to Poons, no, well, mother said, you know, Merle, Merle having a baby, Merle having a baby. So, Mama, Mama Mumbella said to, 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 to Mother Poons, Will I have scissors, Moon? So Mother said, Yeah, Mumbella. Will I have towel, Moon? Yes, you, yes, yes, Mama Mumbella. All right, come on, let's go. And, you know, you can just expect, like, Houston Bolt sprinting down to Cooper's Road. Swung the door open. But lo and behold, Baby Bear was already taking her spot on the bed. <laughs> Mumbella, where is the scissors? Give me the scissors, give me the scissors. She got the scissors and she did her cutting. And from there, ladies and gentlemen, this is where the world was blessed with a wonderful, healthy baby girl who has lived a life that we can all testify, most of us here can testify, I mean, I've heard them, a life of, of honor and respect. Would you say amen? amen. And you know, <laughs> I'll tell you this real quick. I, I know quite a few of you know my mom on points. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, uh. Aunt Lucille said to, to my mother, my mother was 17 years old by the time, you know, when all that happened. And um, Aunt Lucille took mother and said, all right, punts, punts. No, you are no more punts. You are Aunt punts, okay? You are Aunt punts. And from that time, my mother has lived her, all her life with that title because of Auntie Bear as on points. Now, <laughs> I want to also tell you do that, that the first child Auntie Bear had, Miss Bear had, my sister here was actually visiting grandma, grandpa, and uh, I mean, all, most of us know her as Cecile, right? But Cecile got my sister's name, Carol, Marie, from my sister. So, you know, we have that link there. And, you know, it is, it is always a privilege to, to share good things about good people and uh, I just want to close here with, 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 with one last thing you know uh, whenever mother is going to Tangle River or, or anywhere past in Kensington as long as she's past in Kens Kensington she had already gotten her, her, her warning 
from Miss Bell. She said to her, listen to me. On points, don't pass my house. And don't stop. Because I have something here for you. Whether it's, it's green banana, or ripe banana, or, or breadfruit, or, or yam, or cocoa, whatever it is. You hear me, on points? So, my brethren, my fellow friends, may the good acts of love and kindness rendered by our beloved cousin, big cousin, Bev, be a testimony of how we should love one another. In Jesus' name, thank you. While she is in heaven above, knowing the happy time we spent together when it seems like I just couldn't make it, she sit me down like one of her daughters and instill what life is about. She said, sometimes it's going to be rough and sometimes it's going to be tough, but knowing that God will always be there to lead me, to, but knowing that God will always be there to lead me on, in, on is enough. On Sundays, going to church was great because Miss Bev would be at church. Coming back home, my dinner is there, and I was always treated like her own. May her soul rest in peace from Jillian, otherwise called Peely. Amen, amen. Closing all our tributes, we'll be having four tributes in one in the form of a video tribute. That we don't have this stuff. Tribute to, my Tribute to my mom. Pleasant good day to you all. My name is Carol Keller. You might know me as Cecile. I know the passing of my mother, Mary Keller, Miss Bev, is not the moment we were looking forward to. It is with mixed feelings I write this tribute knowing that I am not there. Mom, you were a great inspiration and being your firstborn is an honor. The joy you brought us will never end. Thank you all so much for your support and for being here today to celebrate her life and honor her memory. To explain just how much my mother means to me is an impossible task, but I want to make sure I pay tribute to my mother. I would not be here today. I would not be the person I am. I would not have the life I have. And there is no way I could ever quantify the importance she held in my life. As you leave today, let me cry. Let me say my mom was my hero, leading me to the right, forgiving and loving. A star so bright I lose today. Take your rest and sleep, my love, until we meet again. For the next two minutes, we'll take advantage of this opportunity to reflect on the life of Mary Kellyer. 
fondly called mom or mama by many wannabe grandchildren like myself. And Miss Bev, to those of us who saw her as an older sister. They say some people come into your life for a season, some a reason, and some for a lifetime. I think mama came for all of the above. She came in a season of my life when I was young, and God knew my mom needed family support when her family were mostly in distant places. The reason? She played substitute grandmother, and she did such a good job. And for a lifetime, because her amiable demeanor and solicitous persona will forever be ingrained in my memories. There's so many stories to share and so little time. But basically, mama is the reason I love soup so much. Whenever she made beef soup, she would call me and she'll let me know to stop on the taxi or the bus to pick up my bowl. So mind you, if I fell asleep on the ride from Montego Bay to country, it's like my body knew when I reached the banana station because I was up and ready to stop the bus at Miss Bev's gate to pick up my bowl. There were so many Sundays I rode home from church with Auntie Sandy and went straight to mama's house to pick up my Sunday dinner. Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Well, mama made us feel like family, and that is what she will remain to us. When I left my mom, mama and the Kellers were the closest thing she had to family around her. They took care of her. For this, I didn't get a chance to tell her how grateful I am. I would call mommy on a Sunday and you would hear JDK's laughter or Masgasi in the background and you would know she was at mom's house. Growing up, I didn't see my mom visiting anybody's house. She was the, you know, for what boat kind of mom. So I knew she felt at home when she was there so frequently. It gave me solace that in my absence, she had some other people around her who cared about her. If mama didn't see mommy at church or hear from her for a few days, she was going to pick up the phone and check in to make sure mommy was okay. I wish I got the chance to express how much those thoughtful acts meant to me. Although we would have loved for her to be here with us and circumstances were different, I can say without a doubt that she lived a fulfilling life one filled with kindness, care for others, and a love for God. Mama, we will miss you for sure, but the imprint you have left behind are permanent, so you remain in our heart. We love you. For the next two minutes, we'll take advantage of this opportunity to reflect on the life of Mary Kellier, fondly called Accept condolences from the extended Virtue family for the loss of our sister Bev. In our formative years, we remember Bev as an integral part of our family, fulfilling the role as a big sister and helping to take care of us and giving advice. Spending time with her in Montego Bay was always memorable. We will always remember her for her chair. Sleep on, big sister, sleep and take your rest. We love thee well, but Jesus loves thee best. To the Kellier family, I know it is so hard for everyone right now, but even in the face of death, God has provided his children real hope for the future, hope that can never be taken away, thanks be to Jesus. They shall neither hunger any more, nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to live in fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelation 7, verse 16 to 17. I love you and I am praying for you.
better than that. All the tributes, amen, and all the memories, amen, praise God. At this time, we'll be having an item from the King's Chapel. Circumstances of things that could not all 
anyone, I want to extend greetings to the host pastor, Pastor uh, Frank Kellier and wife, and also to the moderator of the service today. We have a number of them, uh, Pastor Singh and wife, and also Minister Mundle, uh, and blessed also by the singing of our old time friend, Pastor Virtue. Great to see you. Amen. And I uh, hope I'm not leaving out. And to all those who have known me over a long, long time ago, uh, I greet everybody in the name of the Lord Jesus. To the Kelly family, of course, who are grieving at this time, I want on behalf of uh, my family and also uh, my uh, church, not really my church, but the church that I pastor, uh, to express our deepest condolences to the family. Thank uh, Sister Sunny, who um, had grown up under my ministry in Tampa River for many, many years, and till I left them in the 80s, just after Gilbert had actually devastated the building that we had there. And uh, uh, she had continued, and to the sisters and the brothers, uh, some of them I may not even be able to recognize them by now, but uh, I want to say it's really uh, an honor to be here and to stand with the family. In fact, I should have been at another function today to honor one of our minister, but I told the secretary that I could not desert this family. Could not do that. So I'm here. Uh, I would like to leave a little word with you from the book of St. John, the 11th chapter, uh, let me get a verse there that says, verse 25, chapter 11, St. John, verse 25 said, I am Jesus, Senator, I am the resurrection of the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, shall never die. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. There are, another, there are a few more verses that I would love you to notice. Verse 33 said, When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have he laid him? They said unto him, come and see. Shortest verse in this entire Bible, 35 said, Jesus when there are, not, there are a few more verses that I would love to point out, but as I go along, and I'm going to try my best not to be long, I'm one of those preachers that uh, was brought up during the time when preachers preach long sermons. We are in an age where, according to the retention factor of people, we have to cut our time. And the fact is, my brother, is that 
COVID-19 have taught me to preach short. In that, I, in 2020, I was having like three services for the day. And I preached twice for the day. So therefore, it sort of curtailed those long sermons and have me preaching like for 10 minutes. It was quite difficult, but I got there. Today from the passage of scripture though, I would like to choose a little theme, maybe a little mind bothering. And it's simply this, face to face with the resurrection. Face to face with the resurrection. I know that every one of us in this roof, on this roof, have not yet come face to face with death. But we have come face to face with the dead. But never face to face with death. The deceased this afternoon, many, many times in her life, have come face to face with the dead. But the day when she came face to face with death, that was the time she breathed her last breath. That is amazing. Having read the Bible, it told me, it told me that For over 2,000 years, or 400 to 2,000 years, men have feared death. They did not want to have anything to do with death, for in their lifetime, they fear death. There was only one person who was born during all the canon of time that did not fear death and that person was the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is the only one who came face to face with that and have the story to tell after that. Hallelujah. So we are on a path where one day every one of us possibly here today may have come and will come face to face with death. But we may not be able to tell the story after that. Jesus, when he came face to face with them, because he was in the form of man, God was in the form of man, and he taught it not robbery to be equal with man. But the Bible said he made himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant 
and became obedient to death. I hasten to say that when he came face to face with death, death was actually surprised. was the first person that death have ever came across who had actually surprised him because he died before death realized it. Death was surprised when he died for he said no one can take his life. He has authority to lay it down and he has the authority to take it out back. Why? Because he was the resurrection and the life. Somebody give God a praise in this house. Somebody give God another praise in this house. Why? 
because he is the resurrection hallelujah he is the life so I put it to you my dear family to the Kelly's family to the daughters and the sons to the cousins and the aunts to the husband because of Jesus your mother shall live again because of Jesus your sister shall live again because of Jesus the wife shall live again the cousin shall live again hallelujah hallelujah Jesus himself hath transformed everything that the devil has corrupt Jesus Christ got into it and put it in his mixer and turn it around and change everything that we can now we can actually stop talk about death and speak that death is a door that is a door through which we pass that is a door through which we pass but we are going from death To life hallelujah the Bible said our very body it is sown in corruption but Jesus Christ will raise it in incorruption it is sown in this honor but it shall be raised in honor somebody can go to praise I repeat that die when death came face to face with Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. And so Jesus gave up the ghost and they put him in a tomb. After three days, he came out. Am I right? And he came out and he looked back at death and said, Oh, death. Where is your sting? Oh, great! Where is? I heard that grave had victory. I heard that day death had sting, but Jesus said, Oh, death! Where is your sting? He took the sting out of death. He took the sting out of death. He took the sting out of death. You don't have to fear death anymore. For Jesus held death and took the sting out of it. I don't know. To those of you that have seen snakes. I've, I've never. I don't like snakes. Every time I see a snake I want to kill it. Oh, it's the serpent, right? Yeah. But the snake had something in the mouth that they call the town. Huh? And in that, there is the venomous poison that when he stung you, he inject that venom into your bloodstream and it kills you in seconds Jesus knew this fellow Akoshanda. Jesus knew this fellow and he chased this fellow death hallelujah and when death backed up and could not run any further because 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 you know that Jesus owns eternity and wherever the devil could run he couldn't run Jesus out for Jesus is faster than you say both and Jesus run down that old fellow and grab him and held him down and took the sting out of him that those who had feared death all in their lifetime was no longer 
living under fear that fear was completely destroyed annihilated that we can now set free that at no terror can I preach here for the blood bought ones oh glory hallelujah to the Lamb Jesus rose from not just from the grave but from the dead hallelujah that's what if you live for the Lord and you die you shall mama shall live again hallelujah auntie shall live again sister shall live again all because of Jesus Woo! so after this evening that we have been to a lot of programs so I'm not keeping you long and we go to the graveside and we put the casket down and we may put all steels and, and concrete over that and have it sealed but oh hallelujah one day she's gonna hear the voice of Jesus and she will respond to that voice for there is something in her that that voice placed within her that oh lord she had can i put it this way she had jesus dna oh hallelujah and when it calls she will respond that he felt that 
if he had just one tip of water from Lazarus' finger, it would have quenched its thirst. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, hell is a hot place. Hell is a place of flame. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is not a place of rest. But Jesus said, remember your lifetime. I love this. Because your lifetime is important. We listen to uh, Christ's uh, tabernacle relate to us and explain to us that little dash between the date of birth and the date of departure, that little dash. It so happened that as I listened keenly, that Sister Bev Dash, she was really dashing. She dashed some cow skin. She dashed. In her lifetime, she dashed well. Hallelujah. And I, can I? Move further to say that now she had left us, she dashed past us. There are some of us that need to understand this. That whatever you sow in your lifetime, you are going to reap it in the end. Hallelujah. 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 So Dimefi recognized that his lifetime was important. But a lot of folks don't realize how important their lifetime is until when they come face to face with the reality that I can't get out this hospital. I can't get out this nursing home anymore. I can't get out of this room anymore unless somebody take me out. That's when some of us will face the reality that your lifetime is important. Praise the name of Jesus. Sister Beth recognized that. And I'm, going, I'm closing. And that's why she got repented of her sins. Got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Filled with the Holy Ghost and live a godly and a righteous life. She dashed past this life. Woo! Somebody clap your hands and praise him. And waiting, waiting, for she know that the trump will sound one day. And the dead in Christ And if you are alive,
she heard the voice, which is a trap, she will rise. And as soon as she reached Earth's surface, we will be changed. For we are all going up. I feel like singing now. We are all going up in the first resurrection. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you know you have hope, can you shout hallelujah? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Before we continue, I have this short announcement. Um, license plate, motor vehicle with license plate 5538. HT, you are blocking someone who would like to leave. Praise God. Can, can we have at this time the family members standing and the rest of persons seated so that we do prefer to? All right. I'm going to ask everyone else to stand. I'm going to have the family members seated. We're going to pray a special prayer. For them. Lina, as persons, can you just please remain in your seats? Praise God. Can you bow your heads? Father, we give you thanks in your holy and precious name. God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you have done so far. And so, God, as we put every member of the family before you, Lord, you know each by name. You know every circumstance. You know everything that they are going through individually. No doubt it's a time of sadness. For some, God, they will have the effect for a long time. For others, they might be a bit stronger and may be that shoulder for the rest to lean on. But at this time, Lord, we are presenting the entire family to lean on you, Jesus. Because you is our rock and our refuge and our fortress. And so, Father, we pray right now that you, God, will give them additional strength. God, some, Lord, are even in the hospital at this time. God, we know that situations can get worse. But God, we are putting our trust in you that you will keep, Lord God Almighty, even Master Gassi at this time, who is not able to be here. And that God Almighty, we ask for this emotional experience. One, that God Almighty is not desiring. That you will, oh Father, bring comfort and joy and peace into their lives and bring a miracle even now lord the words have been preached and lord god almighty to them that have not yet received you lord god as savior and lord of their lives we put them before you and we ask that you touch their hearts because of a truth in order to meet their mom to meet their sister to meet lord god almighty sister babe they have to be in that place in which they will be able to meet her. So, Father, we ask that you continue to strengthen us. Let your perfect will be done as we pray for covering. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Just an announcement before we sing the recessional song. 
Um, the repast will be at the Holy Trinity Church Hall in Westgate. That's where you will have um, the repast. So just bear that in mind. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to stand, if you can stand. And we are going to be singing the recession of him. And at this time, this is our order that we will go. The officiating ministers will leave first. Then the family will follow. And then the casket will follow. And then the rest of the congregants will go out. Amen. Praise God. Second verse. At about the second verse, we will start um, leaving from the restaurant. At about the second verse. So please don't leave yet as we show respect um, to the proceedings. Go ahead, praise and worship. Sing the wonders of Jesus. Sing. Spread. 